Hi everyone, my name is Steve Lilliston and you're tuned in to our library, which is the 30 minute program sponsored by the lovely folk at the Marston Library to let you know about some of the many new books being introduced into the library um, in the very near future. So you can get in quick and place a reservation on them and, and also I'll be talking about some of the services that are on offer at the Marston Library. Our Marston Library has been broadcast to you today on Arrow 92.7 FM, your community access radio channel, and Wire Upper TV on Freeview Channel 41. This programme is broadcast live on the third Friday of each month at 3.30 and repeated on the fourth Friday again at 3.30. So let's get started. Now, as uh, I always like to put a little caveat on, um, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of books that go into the library each month. So all I can do, really, in 30 minutes is to give you a smattering of the sort of books that are coming there um, in, the, in the next month and, uh, and beyond. I'll split it up into fiction and non-fiction, so I'll briefly go through the, uh, the fiction. So I've, I've chosen a few of the new books. First one is Blunt Force by Linda LaPlante, a name you, know, you might know. Things can't get much worse for Detective Jane Tennyson. Unceremoniously kicked off the adrenaline fueled flying squad, she now applies her trade in Gerald Road, a small and sleepy village station at the heart of London's affluent Knightsbridge. With only petty crime to sink her teeth into, Tennyson can feel her career slowly flatlining. That is, until the discovery of the most brutal murder Jane has ever seen. So, Linda LaPlante, she's a CBE, she's an English author, born in 1973, a screenwriter and former actress, and, as you may know, best known for her writing the prime suspect television crime series, and this is the main character in that, Detective Jane Tennyson. So that sounds like uh, that could be that could be a good read. Next up is the Book of Two Ways by Jodie Picoult. Uh, that's how you pronounce it. Another well-known writer. Dawn Edelstein knows everything there is to know about dying. She specialises in helping her clients make peace with the end of their lives. But as she's flying home from her latest case, she is forced to confront her own mortality for the first time. As the story unfolds, Dawn must confront the questions she's never truly answered. What does a life well lived look like? When we depart this earth, what do we leave behind of ourselves? And who would you be if you hadn't turned out to be the person you are right now? Interesting. <laughs> Jodie Lynn Picoult is 54 years old. She lives in New York and has plus published 26 novels, accompanying short stories, and has also written several issues of Wonder Woman, interestingly enough. Approximately 40 million copies of her books are in print worldwide, translated into 34 languages. So very, very popular, very prolific. Sounds like an interesting book. That's The Book of Two Ways by Jodie Picoult. Next up is City of Spies. This is by Mara Timon. T-I-M-O-N or Timon. Timon. Lisbon, 1943. When her cover is blown, SOE agent Elizabeth de Mornay flees Paris. Pursued by the Gestapo, she makes her way to neutral Lisbon, where Europe's elite rubs shoulders with diplomats, businessmen, smugglers and spies. There she receives new orders and a new identity. Posing as wealthy French widow, Solange Varin, Elizabeth must, must infiltrate a German espionage ring targeting Allied ships before more service, British servicemen are killed. Mara Timon, she's the author of City of Spies, uh, born and raised in New York. She now lives in London, and that's her debut novel. So, City of Spies by Mara Timon. Now, if you've just tuned in and wondering what's going on, 
My name is Steve Lilliston and you're listening to Our Library, which is a 30-minute programme sponsored by the lovely people at Marston Library to let you know about some of the many new books being introduced into the library in the coming months. So here's some more fiction. Next up, it's called The Coast to Coast Murders by James Patterson. There's another name you might, you might have heard of. Michael and Megan Fitzgerald are siblings who share a troubling past. Both adopted and now grown, Michael is a long-haul truck driver, Megan a college student majoring in psychology. They trust each other before anyone else. They had to. When a young woman is found murdered in Michael's LA apartment, he is the chief suspect and quickly arrested. But then there's another killing that is strikingly similar. And as the spree spreads across the country, the FBI become involved in a manhunt for a cold-blooded serial killer. False leads and shocking circumstances that defy logic will leave the LAPD and FBI desperately searching for a way to prevent a string of murders that seem unstoppable. So that's uh, The Coast to Coast Murders by James Patterson. James Brendan Patterson, 73 years old, author and philanthropist. Phil- philanthropist, interestingly enough. Lives in New York. Again, a very prolific writer. Among his works are the Alex, Alex Cross, Michael Bennett, Women's Club Murder, Maxim Ryad, etc., etc. Et so there's a whole list of them. So he's also collaborated on a number of other novels uh, with a number of other writers as well. So that's The Coast to Coast Murders by James Patterson. Next up is The Doors of Eden. This is by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Maybe a relation, I don't know. They thought we were safe. They were wrong. Four years ago, two girls went looking for monsters on Bodmin Moor. Only one came back. Lee thought she'd lost Mal, but now she's miraculously returned. But what happened that day on the moors? And where has she been all this time? Mal's reappearance hasn't gone unnoticed by MI5 officers either, and Lee isn't the only one with questions. Julian Sebra is investigating an attack on top physicist K. Amal Khan. And this leads Julian to clash with agents of an unknown power and there may or may not be human. His only clue is grainy footage showing a woman who supposedly died on Bodmin Moor. Dr Khan's research was theoretical, then she found cracks between our world and parallel Earths. Now these cracks are widening, revealing extraordinary creatures, and as the doors crash open, anything could come through. So that's a bit more than your average... um, Thriller. Um, we've got a bit of sci-fi, a bit of fantasy, all sorts of things involved in this one. This is The Doors of Eden by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Um, Adrian Tchaikovsky is 48 years old. He's a British fantasy and science fiction author, best known for his series Shadows of the Apt and for his novel Children of Time, if you've heard of that. So, uh, next up is Eli's Promise by Ronald Balson, Balson. A captivating saga of the Holocaust and its aftermath, Eli's Promise is a masterful work of historical fiction spanning three eras. Nazi-occupied Poland, the American zone of post-war Germany, and Chicago at the height of the Vietnam War. Award-winning author Ronald Balson explores the human cost of war, the mixed blessings of survival, and the enduring strength of family bonds, a captivating saga of the Holocaust and its aftermath. So Ronald Balson is a Chicago trial lawyer, interestingly enough, an educator and writer, a bit of everything. His practice has taken him to several international venues, including villages in Poland that inspired his first novel, Once We Were Brothers. So that looks like... I'd I'd be interested in that. That's Eli's Promise by Ronald Bolson. All right, so if you've just tuned in, my name is Steve Lilliston and you're listening to Our Library, which is a 30-minute programme sponsored by the lovely folk at the Marston Library 
to let you know about some of the many new books being introduced into the library this coming month and beyond. And also I'll be talking about some of the services that the that are on offer at the Marston Library. Now I just come, covered um, half a dozen new fiction novels that have come into the library, uh, which are available for you to uh, reserve. And now just a small sample of the new non-fiction just in. And first up is Nala's World by Dean Nicholson. <laughs> the Instagram sensation shares the full story of his life-changing relationship with his rescue cat, Nala, and their inspiring bicycle journeys through the refugee camps, remarkable terrains and animal shelters of the world. Dean Nicholson, 31, from Scotland, had given up his job as a welder and decided to travel the world when he came across a tiny, starving cat who quickly climbed onto his bike and fell asleep on his shoulder. After adopting the feline and calling her Nala, Dean took his new companion on a 21-country tour over the course of two years and has penned a book of his adventures titled Nala's World, interestingly enough. So that's Nala's World by Dean Nicholson. I know my daughter would love that because she's into cats. Next up is Bush School by Peter O'Brien. There was a bed, a timber floor, thin tar paper on one side for privacy from the nearby road, but nothing else. The flimsiest of walls, no pegs or nails to hang even a hat, no door, no rug for cold morning bare feet, no bookshelf for a voracious reader, no bedside cupboard for a lamp or a glass of water, no light source. Just a bed and a suitcase for the next two years. In 1960, newly minted teacher Peter O'Brien started work as the only teacher at a bush school in Weebonga, Weebonga. Two days travel by a train and mail car from Armadale. Peter was only 20 years old and had never before lived away from his home in Sydney. He'd had some teaching experience, but nothing to prepare him for the monumental challenge of being solely responsible for the education of 18 students, ranging in age from 5 to 15 years old. With few lesson plans, scant teaching materials, and a wide range of curious minds and ages to, to prepare for, Peter was daunted by the enormity of the task ahead. So that's Bush School by Peter O'Brien. I don't have any details of Peter O'Brien, but uh, obviously Australian. Um, and that's uh, the story of him, I guess, and his, um, his adventures in that, in that uh, bush school. Bush School by Peter O'Brien. Next up is Pandora's, War, uh, Pandora's Jar. This is uh, subtitled Women in Greek Myths, and it's by Natalie Haynes. Now, the Greek myths are among the world's most important cultural building blocks, and they've been retold many times. But rarely do they focus on the remarkable women, normally just the men. Stories of gods and monsters are the mainstay of epic poetry and Greek tragedy, from Homer to Aeschylus, Sophocles, and Euripides, from the Trojan War to Jason and the Argonauts. And today, still a wealth of novels, plays and films draw their inspiration from stories first told almost 3,000 years ago. But modern tellers of Greek myth have usually been men and have routinely shown little interest in telling women's stories. And when they do, those women are often painted as monstrous, vengeful or just plain evil. But Pandora, the first woman who, according to legend, unloosed chaos upon the world, was not a villain, and even Medea and Phaedra have more nuanced stories than generations of retellings might indicate. Natalie Louise Haynes, that's the author of Pandora's Jar, is a 46-year-old English writer, broadcaster, classicist, and comedian. So, a bit of a, um, an all-rounder, I would guess. Pandora's Jar, Women in Greek Myths by Natalie Haynes. 
Uh, on a personal level, uh, I have just finished reading Shaggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. So this was set in a very depressed part of Glasgow. This is a story about the survival of a family which has been abandoned by the father and the mother is an alcoholic. Shuggy is 14 years old and becomes the man of the house when his sister and brother both lead, leave to build a life for themselves. Uh, I love this book. I thought it was great. Um, very stark and depressing, so to say enjoyed, I guess. Yes, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And it's a, it's a look into another life. And it's, it's really hard to believe that people can live like that. But I believe that they do. I believe there's a lot more people living like that. And, and it was just uh, an awful thing to read, but, but very well written. Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. Another book I read this month was Space by Dr. Becky Smithhurst. Now, I don't know if you remember... Uh, but I mentioned that book last month and was so intrigued by it that I, I had to read it for myself. So um, it's a non-fiction book. I don't often read non-fiction, but this was... It, it struck a chord with me, so I had a go at it. And I'm interested in, um, in space anyway. It guides you swiftly through the galaxies, explaining the mysteries of black holes, dark matter, and what existed before the Big Bang, presenting the evidence as to whether we really are alone illuminating what we still don't know and much more besides i've really enjoyed it uh, and it explained it explained a lot uh, very clearly and concisely dr becky smither she's very young she's a, a nuclear not nuclear physicist um um oh come on astronomy astronomer um in astrophysics phd in astrophysics from oxford university so she's, uh, she's not unknowledgeable about her subject. <laughs> and they're, they're little um, essays, if you like, uh, 10, I think, 12 essays on different aspects of space. Called Space by Dr. Becky Smithhurst. Really enjoyed it. And another one I read, um, just a complete um, change, was called Stay, and that's by Catherine Ryan Hyde. And I've read a number of her novels. She has a very light... Uh, tender and simple style but I've enjoyed them all they're a really great read and this was no exception this was called Stay it's set in the summer of 1969 14 year old Lucas Painter carries a huge weight on his shoulders his brother is fighting in Vietnam his embattled parents are locked in a never ending war and his best friend Connor is struggling with his own family issues it was just a lovely warm story I really enjoyed it so that's Stay by Catherine Ryan Hyde. Very prolific writer, very successful writer. So right now I am reading All the Lonely People. And again, it's, uh, it's by Mike Gale. And again, it's uh, a book that I mentioned in um, last month's show. Um, and it just, again, struck a chord with me. Michael Gale is an English author from Birmingham with a Jamaican background living in London. He's the author of 20 books, mainly of the genre Lad Lit. It's called, I'd never heard that before last week, but Lad Lit. Fictional genre of male authored novels about young men and their emotional and personal lives, often characterised by a confessional and humorous writing style. So this one is a lovely story about race, love and loneliness. A little, again, a little simple, I suppose, but but very warm and very genuine. Um, really, really enjoyed that. Um, and uh, and it struck a call with me because it's about a, um, a Jamaican character who in um, 1958, I think it was, 58, 57, leaves his native home in search of a better life at the tender age of 22. Um, that resonated with me because I did exactly that not from Jamaica but from another country to seek a better life seek a different uh, more fulfilling life and I think I did that that was 50 years ago so um, so I'm sure that would resonate with a number of other people as well All the Lonely People by Mike Gale lovely lovely writer 
Uh, so that's all the that's all the box. The finally, um, just I just urge you to check out the Marston Library on Facebook and see the wide variety of programs they have on offer there for the young and the old. So I picked out a couple of the uh, programs that they've got. One is called Quiet Hour. That's on Thursday, November 5th at 9am and Thursday, December 3rd at 9am. And it's for people, specifically people with autism spectrum disorder, anxiety, dementia, or anyone else who may have difficulty with bright, loud or crowded environments. A staff member will be on hand for assistance if required. Uh, to find out more, contact Charlotte at the library. I just thought that was a fascinating um, program to put together. Another program they've got is called Sensory Storytime, and that's on Wednesday, November 4th at 9.30, and Wednesday, December 2nd at 9.30 a.m. again. Um, sensory Storytime is an inclusive storytime aimed towards children with sensory needs, such as, again, autumn spectrum disorder, sensory integration challenges, or short attention spans. In order for children to feel more comfortable, Storytime follows a repeated structure of books, songs, activities, with outside stimulus such as lighting and noises kept to a minimum. So very similar to The Quiet Hour, uh, but, but slightly different. So again, I just, I just thought they were great ideas and how thoughtful of the library to put together something like that, targeted at people with those specific issues, because I have a feeling they, um, they quite often miss out on, on a lot of uh, things that we enjoy, people without those disorders. So I don't expect you to remember those dates. Uh, I throw them at you again, but but I'd uh, advise you if you're interested in those, the Quiet Hour and Century Story Time, go along to the Facebook page, or call the Marston Library, and specifically talk to Charlotte at the Marston Library uh, on three seven zero six two five three, or just Google the Marston Library and and ask about those programs and many more. All on Facebook. Um, there's a wealth of programs there, and that's just two of them. So that's that's about me for another month. Um, I'm Steve Lilliston. That was our library. I hope you enjoyed it. A 30-minute program sponsored by the lovely folk at the Marston Library to let you know about some of the many new books being introduced into the library this coming month and also some of the services that are on offer at the library. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please tune in again to our next broadcast of our library, which is on Friday, November 20th at 3.30pm on Arrow 92.7 FM, your community access radio channel, and Wireapa TV on Freeview Channel 41. Until then, happy reading. Bye-bye.